Hello everyone! I am Paul with Many Voices, and it's been a while since I last used this voice. But well, once again, welcome back to the land of the Vikings. Now I say welcome back, for those that do not know, I have featured this game on the channel before. Way back when it was still in Early Access. And now it's last Early Access, we are currently on version 1.1.0v. And I'm going to be starting a new settlement. Uh, can I choose anything? No, we'll have to do that first. So, before we had the free play, but now we have the immersive mode. Turn a fallen Viking community into a, glor into a glorious one once again. Defeat your sworn enemies. Now, I know the perfect name for this because of the lands. We're first going to start it with the lands. So we've got small lands. We've got the valley in which I did the last series. We've got the Green Bay. We've got the White Rivers. We've got the mountains. We've got the Alone Island. Well, we're going with a volcano. And what is a volcano? If not Iceland. What's well, the capital of Iceland? Reykjavik. Well, I wouldn't be me if I wouldn't implement the word voice into it one way or another. So welcome everyone to Rust. Yeah, Vic. <coughs> Edit banner. We're gonna do it. Uh, well, the flag of Iceland is blue, white. What is the color of the Icelandic flag? It's blue, white and red. Blue and red mostly, so I guess that I'll have to do with that. So blue and red with some white. However, our banner is going to be the Viking Compass. For a very special reason, but I still prefer it in the yellow. <laughs> because I'm still a little bit Swedish. The Viking Compass to Rostjavik encapsulates follow the sound of my voice and you will find your way home so with that let's start beyond the seas the vikings known for their strength and courage stormed forth like a tempest they add power to their power wealth to their wealth they recognize no force that could stand in their way. With each raid, they strike terror into consonants with displays of power, shaking their enemies with destruction and victory. A reckless, relentless ambition. Their return to the village is met with great enthusiasm, yet the intoxication of repeated triumphs is veiling their true purpose, distancing them from their core beliefs. Slowly, they began to forget the gods who bestowed these victories upon them. Blinded by the inebriation of their own might, they were made heedless of the impending wrath. Unrestrained, they ate, drank, and reveled. But they were unaware of the enemy lying in wait. Their lofty arrogance blinded them to the foes at their doorstep. Until the time came, and it was too late to pray to the gods. It's the bloody Danish, I tell you. Heaven's wrath was in the enemy's sword. I definitely this time, the cries of victory and arrogance were replaced by the sounds of plunder, death, and destruction. Hopes had turned to ashes. In the midst of destruction, there's still a burning hope. 
a few Vikings are waiting in hope for a new life, a new beginning. Join them, build your own home, show your courage, and ignite anew the spirit of the Vikings. Rarida! All right. Uh, luckily, thanks to my new PC, this screen doesn't take that long. This game doesn't take that long anymore to load. You said this does take a little bit of time. Alrighty! So, just like before, I am going to be working with the tutorial on. And I'm going to be explaining everything that I know. Welcome to your village! You can learn how to develop and manage your village by following this tutorial. In this section, there are keys that you need to use to develop the village. You can have your... Well, I'm not gonna read everything. You got your cotton of trees, the cotton of stone, the building of constructions, the demolishment of constructions, and the roads. There's some management tools over here. There's some speed... Uh, I believe that now they've added speed 12. Before it was speed 8 that was the max. Well, I'm not quite sure. The seasons in time of day, uh, you start in spring, it is currently day 4 of year 0. And how this series is gonna work, uh, for those on uh, YouTube, just like the original series, I'm gonna be doing one full year per video. So this first year is going to be mostly explanations and uh, tutorial stuff, so things are gonna be slowing down a little bit. But starting the uh, second year, uh, especially once we're getting into the nitty gritty of it, we're gonna speed up things quite a bit. And here we are. A new beginning. Finally, we have found a beautiful place where we can settle with the survivors and rebuild our village. Since you are the youngest and strongest among us, you should now take charge of managing this village. Develop the village, feed the surviving people, take care of them, regain its former strength, and seek our revenge. Aye, that's gonna be the voice I'm gonna be using for the uh, the old one. So we've got some basic camera control: W A S D, E Q, zoom, zoom, hold to do that, and hold shift with the camera things to do that. Alright, so you start out with some random bits of cattle and goats. Sadly, no sheepy! Sadly, no sheepy! But goats will have to do. Right, then up here you have your resources. We've got no wood, no timber, no stone, no cut stone. This used to be dressed stone. Now it's cut stone. We've got 100 silver, 1 gold, which is a new uh, resource, which uh, is gained through plunder. Occasionally, otherwise, you can use it to train heroes and runes. We'll get into that much later. And here you have your stored food. We've got 21 population. We've got an average happiness of 97. And if your villagers become too unhappy, and I do believe that it is within the red area, the left area, then villagers will have a chance to leave. And this is your fame. You start out with three points of... Uh, the Tree of Life, every 100 fame is worth one three points. So one of those points. So you're gonna start out basically with three from zero is one, then 100 is another one, and then 200 is another one. And here's your defense points, which we'll, won't be getting into for a very long time. So we've got our <coughs> objectives over here. I want to keep them on and I'm also going to put on this. I'm gonna set four builders for now. We've got our poor houses, one, two and three. We've got our long house, which is the important house. This is where all of the festivities are being held and all of the important stuff. And you see our lovely, uh, well, it's actually not quite visible, but it's the compass. And this is a carpenter. We'll have to deal with that. So, um, in your longhouse you can uh, see how many families you have, how many population you have. 
Now you can assign to cut trees as a priority or to have stone mining as a priority. Uh, at the moment it doesn't really matter. So our uh, three families live in or uh, seven three families live in these three houses and they are with seven a pop. And now we're gonna be following the objectives. Uh, natural resources. Order a tree to be filled. There. So we've got that. Just hold clicky clicky draggy draggy like this. And all the trees that you uh, have selected will eventually be cut down. So we're gonna do something around like this. For now. Next thing. Order rock digging. We've got some stone here, some stone there, some stone there. There's some stone. There's some stone. I am gonna go a little far for stone. Because stone is an important resource and you will run out of it eventually. So you wanna have that um, done. However, assign a building, a builder, which I've done already. But new to this particular objective is to build a stone storage and a wood storage. Of course, I'm gonna have lots of stone and lots of wood. So what I'm gonna do in storages, you'll find your, uh, in your, sorry, build menu, you'll find your life, your pod houses, your harvest, and more stuff that we need to unlock. And in your storages, you'll find your wood storage, your stone storage, some stuff that we need to unlock, marketplace and warehouse. And then in food, you've got some stuff. In production, you've got some stuff. At sea, we've got some stuff. In military, we've got some stuff. And decorations are going to be important for later. However, wood storage. Ah, but this is just the building tab. So, what I want to do for the wood storage. Uh, I'm going to place them side by side over here in the back. However, if you press the shift key, you can immediately place a second one like that. And by holding the Z key, if you have a building selected, uh, if you're in this menu, you can rotate the structure there. So I'm going to build two of those and two stone storages. And the stone storages will be for now in the back. Like this. So we're gonna speed it up. I'm usually gonna shift between uh, pausing and max speed. <coughs> <coughs> and by completing this, I'll get some stuff. Young leader, it is true that you don't know yet, uh, don't yet know how to build a village, but fear not. I will guide you on this journey. Follow the objectives you see. In the bottom left corner, listen to my wisdom, and let us together construct our new village. I guess that he's gonna be Scottish as well. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, so what I want to see is that your objectives will always uh, yield a reward. So if, if I complete this objective, I'm uh, gonna get a 50 silver and a 100 fame. So that immediately is gonna grant me another... Uh, point in the tree of life. However, a bit of an issue that I have with this game is that pausing is done by space and you cannot press space to unpause. You have to do one, two, three, or four. So I'm gonna often just m miss misdo that, so forgive me for that. Now, each building takes a couple of resources, so two, two wood for a uh, wood storage and two uh, wood for the stone storage and each of them can currently house a hundred stone so with this I already have the storage capacity for 200 stone as soon as the wood storages are built there we go and once it registers done all right so with one objective cleared, and the theme gotten, and yet another three points gotten, um, we have a new objective. Assign a worker as a carpenter, activate working in the carpenter, and use carpeting area 
or cutting area in the carpenter. This is also a new thing. So, let me first show the last thing. Cutting areas max 2. By pressing Q and E, you can increase and decrease the size of this. And for now, I'm going to say that I want this area cut. And... This area cut. Now, all of the trees will automatically get assigned to be cut down. Meaning that I will have this done as well. And the beauty about this game and trees is that as long as you do not build on any given place where there is a tree, the tree will always grow back. And trees grow really fast in this game. But you do need to be on top of your uh, wood. However, with this new addition to the uh, carpenter, you don't really have to pay that much attention. I remember in the original series that I was constantly running out of logs, uh, out of wood, because uh, this was not an option yet. So now let's talk about the actual workers. There are four skills to each person. Look, strength, intelligence and speed. The talents. Now, for a carpenter, you need a strength. The higher the strength, the better the person will perform. However, I am only going to do <coughs> two and below. Anything above two, I will not be using. There. And then I need to activate this, which is also a thing I constantly forget. And then on pause, otherwise it won't register. <coughs> and now we need to build a marketplace. So we need to have uh, 3 wood, 20 stone and 32 timber. The carpenter will make uh, timber out of your wood. And for now I'm going to say 100 of that 100 timber so we need to build a marketplace and have a marketer or a marketeer as I like to call it I'm gonna rotate this and I'm gonna put it directly in front of the longhouse like so 41 what's 41 uh, facility also, because I'm playing a Viking-themed game, and now that I have my face cam on, what better way than to drink a beer from a drinking horn? Haha! <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Ah. So, in the... Uh, if you select the building while it is still under construction, you can assign how many workers are working on it. But you can also say, I want this done ASAP. Or not at all, yet. But I'm going to give it priority because it demands it. So we already have the timber, we already have the stone. And... Uh, could I... Sadly, you cannot cancel the stone collecting. And now we need a marketeer, which requires speed. But speed is quite important, so I'm gonna put two marketeers in there. Gather food! <coughs> we need a gatherer's hut, assign a gatherer, and gather our first fruit and herb. Well, let's do that. The gatherers will have efficient productivity. 100% over here, 100% over here, but 50% over there. So I think I will have you be put over here. Rakia from a shot glass. Mm. So Slavic. Ah. I think that's also a Slavic-esque kind of uh, game. Like like this. 
but not in Slavic. And here we have some information. Market marketers collect all the food in the marketplace and the villagers buy that food from the marketplace. So this is how you earn silver. Somehow your villagers have fled with an infinite supply of silvers uh, and they will spend it at the market to get food. And here is one of the events that will happen. Press an architect, take note, you can learn something from actually having events. And I, I am talking about the uh, Sunset Slammer, uh, Swan, Song, Swan Song Slammer, where I've had like one event and that's it. <laughs> Newcomers were seen coming towards the village. Their village was attacked by looters. Several families, including children, were able to escape. Since they could not bring any of their belongings with them, they had to leave everything behind. At the end of the day-long journey, they've reached your village. They need a place to stay and food. They want to join your village. Now this is pretty much exactly like um, within Banished with the Nomads, <coughs> except in this particular game there is no schools, there is no education. So everyone is gonna be uneducated. However, fame is earned and it might cause new events and if I decide against it, fame is lost. Now I'm gonna allow this until I have up to 100 to 150 villagers in total and after that I'm going to keep denying them. I don't want my settlement to grow too large just yet and I might eventually decide to accept more if I have such a huge village <coughs> and so many uh, possible jobs that I might just want to do this. So for now, we're gonna do that. They can join. And we have more fame. So, our gathering hut is being built. And as you can see, there. So, look and speed. Uh, you need to be pretty lucky in order to do this, so we'll do that. And they are homeless. Aha. So they are homeless, they say. Well then, let's fix that. One. Two. I'm gonna build two additional houses. And it will be uh, evidently shortly. Cool. Cool. Ah. You can just assign a maximum of builders. So as you see. The builders will put in a uh, thing for thing once they start building. Like a pole there, a pole there, something there, something there, something there, something there, 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 there. A beam, another beam, another beam, another beam, cross beam, roof beam, roof beam, stuff, stuff, stuff. And done. And that's how we earn silver. So that's the thing that I love about the game. Is that. <coughs> so we have 100 stone here and there. What I'll do for now. To ensure that I will not lose out on my stone. Normal wood. I'll just add a few more. Because stone will deteriorate and you will lose out on collecting stone if you wait too long. Alright. 
Surviving and feeding the villagers becomes more difficult during winter. When it snows, gatherers cannot collect fruits and fields freeze. Therefore, before winter arrives, you should also focus on hunting and fishing areas. At the same time, in order to keep the villagers warm during winter, they need to bring firewood to their homes. To obtain firewood, you should build a woodshed. Got it. Alright. So, we have... A few new objectives. A herbalist and a herbalist hut. Which originally used to be part of... Something else. A different uh, thing. So, I think what I want to do... Since you are close to there... I'm gonna place you here. Trees that have been cut down will sprout again unless a building is constructed in that area. Seafaring immigrants. Ooh, I am gonna see what this is all about. Ooh. Seafaring immigrants. This is something new for me. Uh, one of the immigrants told us that he has been a, that he had been a sailor before coming here. That uh, that he had spent a lot of time at sea, and that if we wanted, he could give us a lot of information about the sea and the villages in exchange for silver. Now, in my test run of this, I did not have enough silver, and as you can see, it costs you two hundred and fifty silver. This is expensive. However. If the sailor is telling the truth, we can find out about other villages. And does nothing, does nothing. I'm gonna do this. And what do you know? The very first city. <laughs> My own personal hometown of Alkmaar. I actually knew that this town was in the game because uh, during the uh, early alpha, uh, early access, uh, I discovered this by uh, exploring the seas myself. And I made it my goal to, at one point, uh, pillage Alakmar. Which, of course, I'm gonna be doing again for this series. But at least I know about it! As for the gatherers, gatherers gather fruit and herbs. Uh, in all seasons except winter, they do not work in winter. Aye. And this is how... What's... This is how the village looks from uh, behind, so... Harvest is not working. Ah, that's a little too noisy. Now look at that. I'm actually going to... No, 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 no. Set this... as the screen uh, shot for this episode. Because that just looks phenomenal. And I believe that either this or that is the volcano. Unless, of course, that is a volcano as well. But I can tell you, um, I cannot wait. Well, for a second there, I thought that this was smoke. But you cannot see the top of the volcano. So I cannot see exactly where it would be. Aye, this game has northern lights. Of course. We're in the Viking area. The Viking era. So let's do the objectives. Let's do some more management. <coughs> and... We need to build a warehouse. Ah! Indeed. So, this used to be part of the same objective as the Herbalist in the original series. But now it's something completely different. And what I will do... I will actually be building two warehouses.
preemptively. Now, despite that I had to pay 250 silver to that seafaring uh, person, I already have 178. And for those interested, uh, just a second, let me quickly do something really quick there, that's better. Attempt number two, my cat is right over there, sleeping on the chair. Alright. So, uh, are we having enough of everything? Aye. So people are just tired, and that makes them all a wee bit unhappy. Also, it is very dark at night. Aye. It's gonna remain like that for a little while longer. Because I have a particular idea. So, okay, so we need uh, one speedy boy here, a speedy girl, and we will have one speedy person Yeah. And now we need to expand with decorations. We haven't done that just yet. Now, certain decorations, uh, you can place some uh, the fence in, like, you cannot go here, uh, there are bridges, and I see a lot of bridges along the river here, like all the way over here. Not here, this is, I believe, a natural bridge. There are bridges over here, and over there, and over there. Oh, I'm not going to be using the bridges just yet. Because we have no need of them. However, uh, illuminates the uh, surroundings at night. What I do want to do is the pillar torches on this little bit and that little bit for now and here we are increases the storage space of some buildings <coughs> now as you can see there are circles surrounding the warehouses and the um, market and this particular little triangle would uh, allow me to benefit all three buildings from just one item. So you could really prettify this by saying I'll throw a couple of barrels around here and some boxes like in the marketplace. Like I'll throw a box um, like over here. There. And also pressing Z to rotate. Place the box here and here. Now place box number B. Uh, box number B. We'll place that over here and over here as well as oh, <coughs> over here and see here however you can do something really cheesy I think there is not really a limit but what I'm gonna do buckets I'm going to be spending a bit of money So I just placed 36 buckets Uh, 
That'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 36 buckets in each of the warehouses. Well, that has accepted it. And look at that. The building, the storage space has doubled. And this is nearly done. So what I'm going to do... Um... <clears throat> for a wee bit. I am going to prettify it. I'm going to see a wood cart. Because it makes the village look richer as well. So now you see that um, the houses, except this house for some strange reason, uh, is also encircled. So we're going to see, we'll put like a cart here and here. And... Meow, meow. Eh, stop that. Uh, so that was on which side? That side. So it has to be here and here. And then we'll see cart. Uh, sure. One cart here. And one card here. And once it registers, it's going to take a little while. As you can see, it's almost at max capacity. Alright. And now, I've already added 10 decorations. But now it's time to add the roots. With roots, pressing Q several times will increase the si the width of the road, which I'll only do in front of the longhouse. <coughs> As you can see, that cost me 8 silver. Now pressing E will decrease it, but I'll just use the default... Uh, let's see, it's over there. Okay. Uh, I want this here. I just hope that this will work. Hey, cat. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't work because I'm broke. Well, that now is completed as well. And now I need a hunting lodge and a hunter to gather leather and meat. And what I'll often try, uh, just like with uh, Banished, is I'm going to be comparing this game to Banished a bit, is to see if I can put the hunter's lodge next to the gathering hut. But as you can see, the productivity does not match 100%. However, here it is. So I'll place it here instead. Hmm. And then my cat is over there. Hmm. Kitty. Pixie. Hi. And I'm gonna have another sip on my beer. Now each year takes about 30 days in game. So it's about a month for a full year. There we go, there we go, that's some more cotton. You're tired, but that's fine. And we're already with that much silver remaining. There. See, as that only cost me one silver. There. 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 And now for the streets. There. And with the houses, I will always connect them up to the roads. 
with the narrowest possible route. To make it as cheap as possible, as long as they are connected, they will count. There we go. Now, as for this... There... And there. So let's assign to strengthy, lucky people like you. Ah, you. Okay. So now we're gonna gather leather and meat. <coughs> but I think it is time to build a couple more houses. And so we're gonna start working on... A wee little something different. I'm gonna start it with three houses in a bit of a circle. Build a woodshed. Aye. That's you. Uh, that's done in production. Woodshed. And I will be placing it uh, probably on the opposite side here. Now as you can see, because I've already placed a road here, it'll automatically connect to a road itself. Like that. And the silver is the cost of the road. Now I've got 400 stone here, ready for stuff. However, we also we need to be building a fishing hut. Well, it's not in food. Actually, what I want to do, uh, well, is build a well. I'd say around here. And my cat is just... <laughs> she knows that I can see her in my periphery. Perifer in my vision. In my peripheral vision. And so she's gonna be like, oh, I'm so cute. Cuddle with me. Give me attention. And she knows I can't help it. I wanted another will. Uh, over here. There. Uh, but. At sea. That's where the fishing hut is. And I'm gonna set it to go uh, here as a continuation of this particular road. Like so, and we'll fix that up later. Lastly, people were complaining. That's it. That at night it's a little too dark. What I often do is on the left side of each house I place a wee torch. However, not just on every house, but every building. And in terms of the market, see until I'm broke. I'm actually gonna surround the market with torches. And then continue uh, with that. But as you can see, I'm broke. Ooh, winter is coming. Alright. So we've got this. <coughs> Build a fishing hut, add a fisherman, assign a boat to the hut. Now the thing is, we actually start with three fishing boats. Which I also believe is new. Because I do believe in the original series, I didn't start out with fishing boats. And perhaps if I were to choose just the... Uh, the sandbox game, the free build, that I wouldn't start with them either. But I don't know yet. There is no firewood or coal. Well, that's why we have this. I'm going to set it to 250. There's only 50 wood. So let us cut down some more trees. Wow. 
Lots of trees. And the best thing about this is I can remove this area, add another one, and just say uh, up there, add area. Just in the back over here for now. We'll leave this area alone. <coughs> now let's have a look at this in the winter. So there's an aurora as well. There's some frigid uh, effects going on around the screen to indicate that it is hacking cold. We're going to be bringing this over to around like that. But also encircle this because of course we would. So you're sad? Why are you sad? Who, who are you to be sad? Tired. Hungry. Who's sad? You're no longer sad, you're just sleepy. You are sad, why? Because you were hungry. Oh well. Now, I still wish that there was a way that you could remove this. Oh, I'll have to live with that. <clears throat> and as you can see in, uh, on the houses themselves, you will see the shields. Uh, this one is on the back above the door. There's two over there, one over there, it's lovely. Ah, here we go. Knowing that he's not like everyone else, Guest, or Jest, has been beaten by the village bullies while talking crazily in the village square, which this game doesn't have. <laughs> The duty of these tyrants is to protect the rights and dignity of every citizen, but the public is divided on what to do with this crazy villager. Most of the villagers, fed up with how he is behaving, want this man to be exiled, while the others want the bullies to be suppressed so that they can no longer bully anyone. Now this is negative on both accounts. Guess his family would be unhappy with the decision and some villagers are unhappy with the situation which is just the family and others you have to uh, pay 25 silver somehow I can do this while I do not have the silver so we're just gonna kick him out And you are sad because of what? <clears throat> I guess you were ah guest son. You were the son of one of those. Well, you you were the son of his. You are ten years old. You are a genius, but lazy, charismatic, and quarrelsome. Mm. You'd be a fine f fighter once you grow up. Alright, we have the fishing hoods. We are going to assign our luckiest. But we're going to add three fishing boats and see the luckiest one. Two, no, not you. And three. Right. Before this year is over, we've gone into fishing, and we have three out of four possible boats. What's this? Villagers. Ah, you died. 
Stay vigilant. I don't know why, but we must have angered the gods. I have a very bad dream last night. I have a bad feeling about this. Be careful. Now this could very well be because we banished a guest. Could be. Well. Speed. So for now, villagers or workers are not automatically replaced. Or assigned. That is later in the Tree of Life. Which I'm very thankful that they did add eventually. Well, I think that we've got a pretty stable village on our hands. Uh, let me finish off with a few more grand torches around here and there. So you had... These are the new houses. You don't have that yet. You don't have it yet either. Oh. You don't have that yet either. Uh, three, four, five, and six. I'll have one here. I'll have one in the midst of this. That already has light. Those have light. And we'll throw in light here and we're broke again. Huh, definitely like prison architect. Alright, so now it's just a matter of continuing to grow. Have 10 uh, buildings, which I do believe they mean uh, houses. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So two more poor houses would be sufficient. But of course we're gonna do uh, go with 3. Actually... Don't want to do that just yet, so we'll see. There. There. And. I think that I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be the. The, the buildings and then the villagers are just going to be uh, showing up, uh, being born and such. And as you can see we have two gold. So with the event of, um, uh, at least I'm guessing, with the event of the uh, travelers seeking shelter, we received a gold. And just look at our, um, oops, fame, 1610, which means Tree of Life now has 17 points. Now, I will get into the Tree of Life in the next video, because honestly, I don't think at the moment it's such an important thing to do. And the gods indeed are angry. An earthquake. What else? And all this was not due to a volcanic eruption. There. Ah, oh boy. Um, if I had the possibility. Of sacrificing animals I could do this if I had the silver I could do this now that I know that other villages exist I can request aid but sadly that's nothing that they have that I want So, I'm just gonna accept that my villagers will be unhappy for a bit. And they will work 20% slower since they are renovating buildings. Now, I've lost the warehouse, and I've lost the poor house. And the villagers are indeed unhappy. It's cold, they don't have a house. The villagers are unhappy! The people are on the verge of revolt. If it goes like this, the villagers will leave the village one by one. I promise it'll get better lots. 
I promise you have food. They have shelter. Oh. Do something for them. Never underestimate the power of the gods. Don't forget to offer sacrifices to them. You shouldn't provoke the gods. Try to get along with them. Sacrifice. Oh. <laughs> if you fail to please the gods, you must bear the consequences. Oh, that's bad. I'm gonna offer sacrifices, but I currently cannot do that yet, because I have nothing to sacrifice at all. However, as you can see, the happiness bumped up to 59 from 47, just like that. And as soon as those, as soon as this house is done, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and this house is done, number 10, it should be fine. And happiness is going up again. And completing this, oh, we'll actually receive a gold from that. So that's how you get gold. 50 silver and 250 fame. I see. I see, I see, I see. Well, I've got plenty of wood, plenty of that. So I'm just going to cut down some trees here and there. In the back, over here, in the front, over there, 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 and there. In terms of stone, I've got plenty. You're full, you're full, you're not, and you're not. That's good, but there's still some stone left over here and there, so there's plenty of stone left to get. And with that, lads. I am going to be ending it off here today. This has been a little bit the first year of Rustjavik. A new Viking settlement on a volcano in Land of the Vikings. With that, I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. It helps out a great deal. I am Paul with many voices. I thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.